Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 50 of the platform specific twos of my 6502 assembly programming tutorials. And I've got an oscilloscope above me, and there's the title of Chibi Sound Pro in the title of this video, so that suggests we're going to be doing some sound. We're going to be working on the VIC 20 today, and we're going to be porting my Chibi Sound Pro driver to that system. Well, what's Chibi Sound Pro? Well, if you've missed the rest of the series, this is an improved version of my Chibi Sound driver. Chibi Sound was just for simple bleeps. Chibi Sound Pro is more advanced and it's intended as a midway driver for music. So this is a hardware abstraction layer, if you will, which will um, connect to my Chibi Tracks music player and will convert the Chibi Tracks requests into the hardware specific capabilities and play music for us. Now, the enhancements of the improved Chibi Sound Pro driver, it's not really very professional, but a little bit more, um, is that it supports multiple channels, in theory up to 128, but in practice we're only going to try and support three or four. Uh, it supports noise like before. It has a wider range of volumes. We Before we just had low and high, now we have 256 volume levels, so 0 to 255, and we have a 16-bit pitch now. Now, like before, the um, pitch is consistent in that a low number is a low pitch and a high number is a high pitch, but we are not at this stage trying to match the pitches across all systems using the pitch parameter passed to Chibi Sound Pro. However, however, what we are doing is we're adding a lookup table of the notes within the octave that we can use to actually make sounds that should sound pretty consistent on all systems where possible. I say where possible because some systems we can't quite do that because not all systems have the same range of octaves and things. So that could be a little bit tri tricky. Anyway, we're going to be using zero page entries. We'll be using the zero page entry I mark as H for the channel number in bit zero to six and bit seven of that will be the noise on and off state. The volume will be in L and the pitch will be in the D E pair. Now these of course match Z80 registers because this original um, Chibi Tracks Chibi Sound software was ported from the Z80 and I'm a, um, a more traditionally Z80 programmer. So that's where I'm sort of coming from. So that's what we're going to be looking at doing. And today we're going to be using the VIC-20. Now the VIC-20 is a little bit interesting. We basically have three different um, addresses that we can use for three different channels. However, these channels can't all do the entire range of possible sounds. So we're going to use these three together to effectively create maybe like, kind of like a single channel, if you will. And we're going to use that use it to just play one sound at a time. We do, however, have a noise channel as well with um, port D900D there. So we're going to use that as well. So we're, we're going to be using these together to make our sounds. Now, let's go straight over to the source code and let's actually hear what we're going to be working with. So the first thing we're going to be using is we're going to be using this Chibi Sound Pro test, which is a very simple program that I used for um, you know, testing the actual software was working and also for checking, making the frequencies match on all of the systems to the notes they should use. I, I've got a frequency analyzer that shows the note and I was using that. So if I use down and up here, I can change the um, frequency that's being passed to the Chibi Sound Pro driver. So you can hear we get different frequencies here. And if I press the fire button, you can hear we get some noise. So this is just a little test program for making sure that the driver appears to be working correctly for when I'm developing the driver and for testing the frequencies. And I've used those frequencies to make the octave table that you can see here. So, um, and I've used those frequencies to see, to create the octave table you can see here. And this is used to play music. This is the Chibi Track software, which I'm currently working on. And this will play a song for us. And the song that you're hearing here was actually um, composed on my Chibi Tracker Pro that I'm working on. And this was compiled and originally tested on the Z80 on the Amstrad CPC for a little game I'm writing called Chibi Fighter. Now, the point I'm making here is this music wasn't created for the Vic, it wasn't created for the 6502. This is a multi-platform music player that allows me to play a song and it could to sound reasonably similar on all of the systems, as I say, within the limitations of the hardware. So that is what the purpose of this so-called Chibi Sound Pro is. The Pro moniker is a parody of the um, Sound Blaster Pro. It's, 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 I'm not trying to claim any professionality with, with this software at all. Now, the various channels that we have, um, they actually, um, we've got these different ports, 900C, 900B, and 900A. And these combined will effectively make five octaves, as you can see in this little chart here. 
Now, because there is some overlap between these um, ports, we could actually play mute multiple sounds at once, but for simplicity, I'm only going to try and play one sound at a time. But what we do have to do for the Chibi Tracks software, it, the Chibi Tracks really is designed for at least three channels. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to simulate four channels. We're going to read in all the settings for those channels, and then we're going to play the sound of the loudest of the four. So that's how we're going to deal with the problem of the multiple channels. As I say, this is for the convenience of the music. The alternative with the GB Tracks software is we could just play the first channel. I always use the first channel for the main um, sounds, but it does give better effect if we use this virtual system. So we're defining some bytes of memory, this channel cache here. This will be used, we'll turn that off, let's go off. This will be used to cache the data that's being um, sent to the Chibi Sound driver, and then we will select the highest channel from that. So we will see that in our code. Now, at the start of our code, we have the initialization routine. And what this is doing is it's zeroing the cache, setting everything to zero so that it will start correctly. Now, the Chibi Sound Pro set will be executed when we want to change the sounds that are playing. And we will have the HL and DE parameters passed as I discussed before. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom two bits of the L parameter, which will be the channel number, and we're going to basically multiply those by four and use this as an offset within the ca channel cache. Now, the reason we're doing that using these bottom two bits is we need to support at least three channels for our music software. And in theory, we could get a value up to 127, but by looping any extra channels around, we are providing some fun functionality for those higher channels. Um, it, it, that's gonna be fine for our purposes. So what we're then going to do is we're then going to store all of the parameters for the new request into that channel position. Now, what we're going to do is we're storing the, the H parameter here, which is the volume, and then we are going to store the L parameter here. But first of all, what we're doing here is we are checking if the old, the old noise was set to on, because if the old noise was set to on and we're now turning it off, then we're actually going to need to silence the noise. Um, because we're using virtual channels here, we need to make sure that the noise gets turned off when the virtual channel that was previously on was turned off. So we're checking the old state there, and if it was on before, and if it is now off, we're zeroing the value to 900D, and that is, of course, the frequency of the noise. And by setting the top bit of that to zero, that is turning off the noise. So we're turning off the noise as soon as the noise is disabled for the channel there. Now, what we're doing next is we're then storing the remaining parameters, the L parameter and the two pitch parameters there. And that is stored them in the cache. And then once we've updated the cache, we're then going to scan the cache and see what the current loudest playing sound is. And then we're going to update the actual hardware to play that sound. So we're starting off by setting H to zero, um, which is effectively silent. So we're starting off with the least expectation, so to speak. And then we're scanning through the channel cache for anything that is higher than H. And as soon as we find something that's higher than H, we are storing the contents of the cache into our four parameters in the zero page here. Here. And then we're just going to repeat that until we get to the 16th entry, the fourth virtual channel, unless we've enabled this single channel option, which would effectively disable the virtual cache and would only play channel um, the channel zero, the first channel. So as I say, generally speaking, that gives inferior music. But um, if you wanted to do that, you can. It's, um, it's no extra code, really. So I've just left that in there. OK, so now what we're going to do is um, we're going to actually set up our hardware. So the first thing we're doing here is we're setting B and C to 9000 in hexadecimal here, because you can see, of course, all of our registers are in the 9000 range here. So that's what we're doing here. Um, what we're doing next is we're actually zeroing all of the um, tone channels, because as I say, we're going to use only one of these tone channels to make the sound for this current frequency, but the others may be doing something that we're not using. So we're silencing them all here. What we're doing next is we're using H. Now H is the eight bit volume, but we only can take four bits of volume. So we're taking just the top four bits here. And then what we're going to do is we are going to basically combine them with the value in 900E. Now 900E is the volume of the sound, but it also sets the auxiliary color information in the top four bits. So we don't want to break that. So we're keeping the existing top four bits from 900E and oring in our new volume and then storing it back here. So that is maintaining our sound there. What we're going to do next is we're going to check and see if we are making a noise. If the top bit of L is a one, we're going to make a noise effect. 
Um, in that case, then what we're actually going to do is we're going to store to port 900D, that is um, the frequency of the noise source. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the D part of our DE pair. We can't actually use the E part on this system, but as I say, this is a multi-platform driver, so it has to work in the same way on all systems. So we're only using the D part here. We're shifting the bits to the right by one, effectively using only seven of those bits. But we also need the top bit to be a one because the top bit is, is the enable bit. And so we're setting that to one by setting the carry and rotating that one in there. And then we're storing the value of the frequency with the top bit set to one to effectively nine double OD here. That's what we're doing there. And that has now set the noise enabled with the correct frequency. And so we're returning. We've, of course, already set the volume up here. If the noise is off, however, well, we're going to do things a little bit differently. It's a little bit more complicated. Now, we're going to take the top three bits of the frequency from D here, and we're going to use those as an offset within this Chibi Sound octave address table here. And we're actually effectively multiplying those top bits by two because each entry within this table has two bytes. Now, the first byte is effectively the address that we want to write to. So this entry here, for example, you can see a lot of these low ones, um, as the, we don't really have the full range of frequencies I would prefer. So we're setting these bottom ones all to 128 here. But basically the first byte, like OA here, is the offset to one of the channels. So this is the low channel. And then the next value of 128 is the amount that we need to add to our frequency setting. Now, if you look at this chart here and just knowing this system, basically we need to give a value of a minimum of 128 because the top bit needs to be a one in all cases to turn the channel on. And it can be anything up to 255. And we've got some proper frequencies here, which will give proper notes here. So we've got our base value that we need to add to the frequency of 128, 135, 195 or 225 here. And we've got the memory address 0A, that's for 900A, um, 0B for 900B, or 0C for 900C. For the three frequency oscillators of the um, various octaves we may wish to use. Okay, so we are now effectively loading in here first the base address and we're transferring that into Y. So that is going to be the place we're going to write our data to. So what we're going to do next is we're going to set the frequency. Now we've already got part of the frequency in these values here. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take six bits from the DE pair here, and like this, we're gonna take these bits here from the 16 bit pair. We're gonna shift them around and we're going to mask that and we're going to keep those bits for our frequency. But there is one other thing we need to do because these are the sort of um, the raw value from our past parameter, but we need to change the scale according to the octave we're outputting to because as the octave goes up, the frequency basically needs to halve. And so we're going to check our frequency parameter here for and see if it's 135. And if it's not, then we're at least in the second octave. And so in that case, we will halve the value in D. Then we will compare it to 195. And if it's greater than that, then we need to halve it again. And so we're shifting that there. And that is to give, to allow the DE values to give a constant sound it, it, so it goes up smoothly and doesn't, um, doesn't have weird effects there. So that is something we're needing to do there. Um, we're then loading in the final value from D. We're then adding the base, which is the second byte for a value here, 128, 135, 195. And then what we're doing here is we are storing that back to the channel, which is of course one of these hardware ports here. And so, as I say, this is allowing us to create a range of sounds from the um, from the DE pair, and this gives a smooth range of frequencies. And this allowed me to create the lookup table, which you can see at the start. And this lookup table, uh, this one I did with a calculator. I did this in an Excel spreadsheet. I calculated these, and I think they're pretty accurate. And they give a nice range of sounds and allow me to play some simple music. So there we go. So um, that's the end of today's example. If you want something simpler for your sound effects, I do have the original Chibi Sound rather than Chibi Sound Pro, which was an example of how to make simple sounds on the VIC-20. And so if you prefer that, please take a look at that. Of course, go to my website, download the source code for today's example and have a go with yourself. And as I say, do with it whatever you can. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.